Dad, I'm going to Walmart with friends, and I'm 13, so I can't carry a weapon, so what do I do? Just improvise. You know, like MacGyver. Who? Oh, gosh. Welcome to the Impact Defense Podcast. Podcast. We're dedicated to giving you the information that you need to help keep you safe. Now, let's join our hosts, Brian and Jada. All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about improvised weapons. What is an improvised weapon? Something that's not technically a weapon that you use as one in the moment. Yes. You don't have something else on you. You got to use or when you use something, it's an improvised weapon. What can be an improvised weapon? Wow, that was a little bit dramatic, don't you think? <laughs> I know. Pretty... What can be an improvised weapon? Well, why don't we just like go through a list of common improvised weapons? Okay. I think that would be, you know, pretty decent. Um, one thing that a lot of people talk about is keys. So let's just go ahead and start there. Uh, one thing, and we've talked about this on Facebook, we've talked about this. Well, we talk about this starting out in seminars. We start, we, we do this in seminars. We talked about it on Facebook. We talked about it on YouTube. We talked about it on TikTok. It always ticks people off. And that's that whole stupid idea that if you put keys in between your fingers and punch with it, that it is a good weapon. It is not. They fold down. They fold up. You know, there's just too much. There, It's just not strong enough in that moment. So we really have three different ways. Plus, it just kind of hurts your fingers. It, it can hurt your fingers, yeah. So we have three different ways that you can use it. Number one, just hold your key like you're about to open your door and just hold really, really tight. It's actually a lot more sturdy that way. Uh, second would be grab the key by the end of the key and use the other key like an ice pick, kind of stabbing with it. Um, and then the third way would be like if you have some type of key fob or a key, ring, you know, not really a key ring, but something along those lines, you grab a hold of it and then you use your keys like a flail where you just want to hit them with your keys. Um, none of these are perfect ideas. We're talking about, again, if you don't have any weapon on you and you need something in that moment as a force multiplier tool. Anything else you can think of with the keys? Pins work. Yes, Miss ADD. I'm talking about keys. Anything else with the keys? <laughs> oh, I thought you st- we were talking about... I, uh, can you guys think of anything else with the keys? And you said pins work. <laughs> can you think of anything else with the keys? No. Okay. So, pins work. Right? Pins work for self-defense. It works better if you have a tactical pin, but an actual, a normal pin will work too. Yeah. But it's definitely not made for striking. You know... Uh, pens, pencils, if you've watched John Wick, you know, the <laughs> mob guy talking about, I once saw him kill three men in a bar with a pencil, you know, that was part of the big character building thing for John Wick, but pencils act and, pen, and pens actually do work for self-defense. So. Yeah. So if you hold it like an ice pick, you can strike with it that way. It's not great, but it can be done. Um, and then like another way that I've seen it done is actually hold it in your hand and run your index finger up the pin and then strike with the end of the pin that way. That kind of like reinforces the pin a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of either one of those. I don't think you're going to get nearly as much power out of that as using it like an ice pick. I agree. But generally, if you think about it, here's the idea behind that. If I can, you can pretty much point at anything pretty easily. You know, I can point over here at Kylie. Okay. So if I can point at her without like a tremendous amount of concentration, it's an easier to hit the target that I want to hit with it. And I think that's the idea behind that one. And it does reinforce it enough. No, no, I'm not saying it's great. But it is. it does reinforce it enough that it does. It's, it's legitimate. We'll just put it that way. It's legitimate. It's better than sticking it in between your fingers and punching with it because that's stupid. We've already discussed that. It's just like pins. Belts, if you wear a belt. Yeah. That can be taken off. Um wrapped around your hand to, you know, cover your knuckles if you're going to hit someone with it. You can wrap it just enough to where you have the end of it to use as a kind of whip. Yeah, when we're talking about the the buckle portion. Yes. Whatever's on the end of your belt. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. That can be used as an improvised weapon. Um, And, you know, depending on how things work out, you might can use it to restrain someone, you know? (laughs) Um, high heels so if you are out in a dangerous place and you are wearing high heels go ahead and take your heels off and walk barefoot Um, 
Because you cannot run in high heels. You you cannot run in well, high heels. I don't care who you are. You're not going to be able to flat out sprint in high heels. But if you take it off and hold it by the part of the shoe where your toes would go, you know, and use the heel of it to hit someone with, then you have a weapon. You know, I can't really imagine that would feel good, to be honest with you. No. Like, <laughs> I am... I'm in between which one would be worse. The big chunky heel, you know, on the back that's just like... A real big thud. <laughs> yes. Or if the sharp one would be worse because it's not quite as heavy, but it also could probably open a few gashes. But either way, if you're wearing high heels in a dangerous situation, take them off. Use it as a weapon instead. You can put one in your purse. But anyway. Um, flashlights. A uh, good hard flashlight hit to the head definitely um, never hurt anyone's personal safety. <laughs> what? Hot coffee. That's one. Yes, Miss ADD. We're not past flashlights yet, though. <sighs> and when it's dark outside, you can use flashlights to turn on, shine in someone's eyes, and uh, really disorient. Yeah. So, wait. <laughs> So you, you can hold flashlights like you would, like the, the pen or the key that we're talking about, like an ice pick kind of thing, and like camera fist somebody with it. So if it always has good, strong ridges. And then there's the, like pens, they have tactical flashlights where you can take those and hit. And a lot of times they have ridges on the end of that to make that even better. So go ahead. And now again, hot coffee. Yeah. How would you use hot coffee? Open the lid. I realize there's a video element to this podcast, but how about using your words a little more to explain what open the lid psh is? You open the lid and then fling the coffee at them. With just any random person on the side of the road? No, the person who's attacking you. <laughs> so hot coffee can kind of be used in the same manner as mace or pepper spray. Mm -hmm. You fling it in someone's face, their eyes, and that scalding liquid is going to uh, cause some damage, a burning sensation, you know, and uh, should offer you um, a good bit of time to get away. Yeah. I think uh, usually the way we present it in the seminars when we teach it is like if you're pull up to a gas station and it's dark out and when you're going in, if you're going in for any reason. Super friendly. Yeah, you feel a little. A little weary. Almost every gas station has a little coffee area. So whether you drink coffee or not, you go ahead and just go over there. If you feel a little sketchy about going back out, go ahead and pay a dollar for the cup of coffee and just fill that thing up. And it's really, really hot generally. And then as you walk out, if somebody messes with you, you can throw it in their face. Um, if they do not, then you, and you drink coffee, you have your bonus. It's just a cup of coffee you get to drink afterwards. <laughs> and if, you know, neither of those things happen, well, you paid a dollar for an improvised weapon that you could use in the moment if you need to. And I would pay a dollar for the, you know, yeah, to better my safety. We've had several people ask about using their heavy metal water bottles as improvised weapons, and yes, those actually work too, especially if you have a longer, more thin one. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that are legitimately shaped like cavemen clubs, you know? <laughs> if you think really? about it, look at... No, just think about it. Okay, you know the ones that are like this one, but are skinny. They're kind of shaped like, gotcha. um, okay. you know, Blenheim ginger ale bottle or... I got you. Um, but there are those that are shaped like those, and that that, that end is just a handle to me, <laughs> you know, to hit someone with. Yes, a heavy metal bot water bottle will work because it's heavy and metal, and <laughs> yep. you can hit people with it. So, yes, yes, it works. Um, you can even, you can probably even buy just a glass bottle drink in the store Yeah. and hit someone with that. So, it doesn't even have to be the hot coffee. Hot coffee, hot liquids. Um work well for run and go but in another kind of situation if you need to hit someone with a glass bottle that it's not the safest safest thing for their their health so no no um there there are lots of options that are just at gas stations we could probably spend a little while on gas stations if we really wanted to like if you are pumping gas and someone comes up to attack you 
pulling the nozzle out of your car and spraying them with gasoline tends to really distract people. Yeah. Is it the safest thing to do? No. No. Is it better for you than going in someone's van or being, you know, assaulted? Yes. Yes. So you can bet that, you know, when I'm at a gas station all night, some people are like, well, I just put the nozzle in the car and get in my car and lock the door. I'm like, that's that's a valid option. Yeah, it is. But to be completely honest, I prefer to stand out there with my hand on the pump just because for me, that's a whole lot better and I can slam the thing shut and get in my car. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't have to drive away with the nozzle still in my car with the card running up my credit card number, you know. (laughs) I'm just going to turn, spray on with the gasoline, and go. (laughs) So, that can be used as an improvised weapon. We hear a lot of people talking about in a different country or something, how they're not allowed to carry things for self-defense. They're not allowed to carry mace, they're not allowed to carry any of this. And people have talked about how they carry little tiny things of hairspray. Mm-hmm. Um, hairspray is a valid option, yes. Uh, the problem I see with hairspray is that it's not made to go very far. Yeah. Um, so whenever you turn to use hairspray, if it's one of the ones that missed, it only goes about two or so feet out. And if you need a little bit more distance, it's not effective for that. It does cover a lot of area, though. So yeah, that's still, one benefit to it. I'm still a little on the fence about using hairspray, which is why I haven't really said a whole lot to people on that one. You can use Windex or stuff like that. Yeah, that's uh, that can be very devastating. But in some places, I've actually heard certain states and all, if you are, if you are carrying something like Windex or 409 or something like that, then it can be considered carrying a deadly weapon. So you can still be charged with that if that if it's pretty obvious that you're carrying it for that reason. So, you know. I don't know that a keeping a bottle in your car, though. Like, put it in a grocery bag in your car with a receipt for it. Like, you know? <laughs> it's like, no, I just needed to clean my glass and all. But that that is an option. And what are the odds someone is really going to charge you for carrying you know, Windex? It's not. I don't think that the odds of having discussions charging. with people that are that do what we do outside of the state in other states and stuff. Yeah, they they said that people have actually been charged for carrying a deadly weapon when they are carrying something like four or nine or Windex um, because it's very obvious that they are carrying it for a weapon. Mm-hmm. But let's say that you are a real estate agent and you're showing a family yeah. a home. Um, you have a bottle of Windex sitting by a window while you're showing them the house and everything. And believe it or not, a lot of real estate agents and realtors get attacked when they're showing houses, mm-hmm. um, especially women in that industry. So. Having a bottle of Windex or something around, that just looks like someone was recently cleaning the home. You're not carrying it around. It's just there. That's a situation where, yes, it may not be an everyday carry improvised weapon, but it is there if you need to legitimately improvise. So leaving a bottle of Windex out is not a bad idea for if you have to show someone a house, if you're going to be, if you're having people over that you've never had before, you don't know them very well. Um, you're home alone. Yeah. Those are situations, and it reaches a lot farther if you have it on the spray mode. So it can reach a whole lot farther than just hairspray. Because I don't know that I've seen many hairsprays that have a jet mode, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, some people talk about sharpening the end of a comb, and we don't really know much about that. Um, the thing can easily break. I've broke a lot of combs on my hair. Yeah, but <laughs> for me, I feel like it would be about the same as using a plastic pin for self-defense. You know, if it's yeah, just if it's, if it's the end of a plastic comb, yes, it can probably be used to stab someone. No, it will not be comfortable for them. You can probably use that. Um, would it be my go-to? Probably not. But, mm. uh, women, you carry really heavy purses. I know this. You can swing it at them. That is an option. Yeah. 
Engagement rings with large rocks. There we go. Those can be used for self-defense. Most people say uh, punch someone with the big rock, and that works. But what also works is turning it around where it faces the other way and using it as a rake on the face and the eyes. Combining it with a palm heel seems to work pretty well, but it can really easily, if you go and you scrape it across the forehead, open a gash. Mm -hmm. And when you gash your forehead... Um, blood runs down into your eyes and makes it really hard to see. Um, heavy jewelry like bracelets, if you're going to wear a heavy bracelet, that can be wrapped around your hand instead and used in punching. Or you can blow off with the chapstick because if you hold it in a way like pepper spray, then someone might think that it's actually pepper spray and not chapstick. Yeah, but you have to actually use, make sure you're using your words as well. Yes. Yeah. Back up, back up, or I'll spray your pepper spray. Yeah, something like that. And, you know, something like that, people are not going to stop, look, and go, wait, is that... I'm not putting my eye close to something that someone says is pepper spray. Heck no. Is that pepper spray, or is that chapstick? Or it could be lipstick. Either one. Yeah, anything like that. I mean, I wouldn't be, like, putting on chapstick and immediately turn to saying, I'll spray you with mace, because that's not convincing. I was just... Yeah, yeah. probably <laughs> But if it was in your pocket... Yeah. Or on a keychain, because a lot of people keep pepper spray on a keychain, and a lot of people keep chapstick on a keychain. Yeah. Pull it straight off there and use it and say, I'll spray you with mace, pepper spray, whatever you want to say. And I'll I'll bet you they're not going to really squint and try to figure out if you're telling the truth. Yeah. They're going to go, hand out, eye tilted away, hang on, hang on. Generally. We've talked about it a little bit before. In, in, Unless in they're hopped up on drugs. Yeah. In a lot of those situations, you know, understanding the mental part of self-defense there. When that, the attacker is coming at you, they don't expect you to fight back. And then when you do, it's kind of a shock to them. And if you do something like that, they're not going to sit there and go like, wait a second, pepper spray is illegal to carry in this area. You probably are not carrying pepper spray. And the fact of the matter is what they're doing at the moment is breaking the law. So why wouldn't they assume that what you're going to do is break the law? You know what I'm saying? So. Um, when I carry an umbrella, I carry it like a freaking sword. <laughs> Well, there's also the tactical umbrella. There are tactical umbrellas. That you got, like, super geeked out of. I did. I did, because I, whenever I carry an umbrella, I think, okay, how can I use this if I need to? You know, because if I'm going to carry something that big and it's going to take up space, I might as well have more than one use for it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, especially in North Carolina, when I kind of have to carry an umbrella in a lot of places because you never know what season it's going to be at any given time of the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> so, you know, an umbrella can be used. There's usually at least one hard end of an umbrella. If you have it open, it can be used for deflection, you know. It's not like it's the most sturdy thing in the world. Unless it's a tactical umbrella. Unless it's a tactical now umbrella, that's which one we were thing. severely impressed by. I'm not sure. I, that's one of those things I think... That might actually be legal in places where it's illegal to carry it because there's nothing on it marking it as an, a tactical umbrella. Yeah. So I don't know that anybody would give a, a, a second look to that thinking it's a weapon. Basically, there are a lot of things out there that you can use as improvised weapons. We, we didn't Steel touch. Steel boots. Yeah, so we didn't touch on, you know, a quarter of the things that are available to you. So the thing about it is when you're thinking about an improvised weapon, you sit there, you look at it and go, hmm. How could I hit somebody with this? And that's basically a lot of the times the way you do it. And then you, when I say test it out, don't test it out on somebody. Actually hit something with it that you're not going to, you know, mess yourself up or somebody else up. Um, we have layered, because we had a bunch laying around, we had layered several cardboard boxes inside of something to make sure that it actually would be strong enough to do something too. Um, but, you know. All right, guys, so when you think about your personal safety, if you're going somewhere you cannot carry uh, a weapon, think about what you have on you that you might be able to carry or might be able to use as a force multiplier tool, and that's essentially just an improvised weapon. Uh, thank you guys so very much for listening. Stay safe, stay alert, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to the Impact Defense Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about how to keep yourself safe, check out the articles, videos, courses, and seminars at www.impactdefensenc.com. We also do training for security teams, churches, businesses, groups, and more. Stay sharp, stay focused, and train hard.